Ari is a three-year-old student who's looking for a playhouse close to home, playgrounds, and mom and dad. I want a house. I get a big house. I like playground. Be closer. Like mommy, papi. I go to school. Be closer. Playground. On today's episode of Playhouse Hunters. So we'd been wanting a playhouse for Aria for a long time, and we found this awesome one on Facebook Market for a hundred bucks. It was a lot bigger than what we expected, but it was really worn down. It doesn't look so bad on camera, but we had a family of spiders basically living in this. But Aria loved it, even without fixing it up. The first thing we did was take everything apart. I highly recommend that you take it all apart if you are buying it secondhand, even if you're not going to paint it because there's so much water living in each individual piece. These houses do have little drain holes, but they're placed awkwardly. And unless you're taking it apart, it does not drain. Some pieces are really hard to take out, but trust me, they do come out. No big See, see how this one comes out? Oh, it's this way. No breaking it no way here. Well, I'm, we're not breaking it, we're fixing it. Oh. Since this is a step two playhouse, I actually ended up going online and pulled the manual on how to put it together so we can figure out how to take it apart. We're not the original owners, so a bunch of the original pieces were missing, like the skylight, which was really important so that rain doesn't get through. I also bought some bug spray from Home Depot just to get rid of all those spiders that have been living here for a while. Get out of the bugs. Oh, look, there's a bug right here. Bug right here. I took apart the little clock and the phone, and these are things that do come in the kit that they sell you on the Step 2 website, but to be honest with you, I really didn't want them. I just took it apart to clean them. We also took apart the hardware that came on the door and on the little cabinet. We were going to replace that anyway. We just wanted it off, but we did end up bleaching it in case we kept it. So initially, I tried cleaning everything with some LA's Totally Awesome to get some of that gunk off. The camera really isn't picking up how dirty this house is. Is, but if you touch it, your finger will definitely end up with some residue. So cleaning it this way wasn't enough, so we decided to just pressure wash it. And before we pressure washed, we took the entire house apart and we decided to add some extra drain holes. Now the house does have drain holes in every panel, but it isn't enough and it's placed awkwardly, so water just sits there, creating a smell and spiders. And as you can see, there's a ton of old water just sitting in this house. With a drill bit, my husband just went to every piece and just added some holes. If you have this on a platform, like a pallet, then you can add it to the bottom. If not, then just add it to the very bottom, to the side, to allow it some time to drain. As you can see, this is all really old water just sitting there. So once this was all ready to go, we decided to go ahead and pressure wash this. Now you can rent a pressure washer at Home Depot, Lowe's, any hardware store, and they start about 25 bucks. This got rid of all the dirt and grime immediately. Such a time saver. Did you make sure you get my little tutu? We let all the pieces dry, and while they were in the garage, I did sand them down a little bit, nothing to create a texture wiped them down, and then it was time to spray paint. I used Rust-Oleum's Blossom White, which I'll show you in just a second. I also used a spray paint handle. This you can find at any hardware store. It just makes it a lot easier. You don't get finger cramps. And with four cans, I managed to do the inside of both roofs, the cabinets, and the inside of the other roof. You're gonna have a third piece when it comes to this house. Now this part is optional. This was just me being super extra. I decided to give the house a trim. So when I did paint the whole thing white, I painted the edges as well and I covered the whole thing with some painter's tape from the dollar store. The cheaper the painter's tape, the better. And then we covered the top with Rust-Oleum's Espresso. The darker the color, the less paint you're going to need because this covered in just one coat. Now you want to make sure that your spray paint is meant for plastic and also that it is satin or flat, not gloss. Gloss chips off almost immediately. Now with only two cans of the espresso, I was able to cover both the roofs, the side panel, both shutters, which were originally going to be another color, and the little welcome mat. So while it was still wet, I decided to remove the painter's tape and I was so excited that none of the white had chipped off. Now that excitement didn't last too long because once I removed the side there was definitely some chips 
And honestly, I was not too mad at that because this was kind of an experiment. So I grabbed a little piece of cardboard and covered that up. I let all my pieces dry, and at this point I was still using spray paint, so I decided to cover up the side panels with white spray paint. So I used one more can of Blossom White, and I had a ton left over because I didn't use any more spray paint after this, and you'll see why. One tip I can give you is that once everything is dry, start assembling while the house is still disassembled so that if it does chip, which it will because it does take a lot of force to put things back in, you can always just touch up your paint without disturbing the entire house. So for instance, when we put in these shutters, we did have to touch up the white paint in the areas where it scrapes against it. Because it was raining a lot, we stored all of the pieces in the garage to let them dry, and the next day there was so much chipping, not the brown paint, but definitely the white paint, so I decided that we would assemble the house and we would move on to another white paint to avoid this problem. I got some bad news. What's up? The paint is chipping away. Oh no. I did find some other paint. I can go ahead and call Ari to see if she's okay with us spending that. Then I have to call Ari. Alright, I'll give her a call. Hello? Hello. What are you doing? Yeah, we're just working on the house. Okay. Unfortunately, the paint that you chose is chipping. What? The good news is that I found a paint that would probably work beautifully. Just a little above budget. Oh no, it's fine. All right, so I'll go pick up the new paint. She said, yeah, we can go All ahead. All right, I'm gonna go pick up the new paint. All right. After doing a little research, I found this outdoor paint that's actually meant for plastic. So I went to Michael's and purchased it. It was $16, but I used a coupon and this little 16 fluid ounce jar covered the entire thing. So I did every trim on the house inside and out and I had paint left over. I did buy an extra one just in case I discontinue this because that's just my luck. But I started off with a brush just to get nice crisp lines and then moved on to a roller and it worked out just fine. This is time consuming and I did do three coats, but it was worth it because there was no smell and I didn't have to worry about it raining since it dried quickly. For the inside bay window, I used that same paint and painted it white. And then I went ahead and used silver Rust-Oleum spray paint for the accessories. This one is a paint and primer, so it is meant for plastic. But if you do have one that isn't meant for plastic, just prime it beforehand with some white. With that same spray paint, I spray painted this little organizer from Dollar Tree and the sink as well. Now I'm going to let this dry really well so that it doesn't have any fingerprint marks afterwards. Metallic paints usually tend to leave a ton of fingerprint marks if you touch it beforehand. And then afterwards, when it's fully dry, I added my faucet and my accessories. For the sides, I really wanted a chalkboard, so I used contact chalkboard paper. I didn't want to use a real one in case it fell. I didn't want it to fall on my daughter. So I picked this science board up from Dollar Tree and I removed the flaps and then I covered it completely with the contact paper. I'll leave a link to the contact paper below. One roll did cover both flaps and then I attached it using heavy duty command strips. So now I'm gonna add these cute little knobs which I got at Walmart and they fit perfectly. I removed all of the paper and painter's tape and as you can see, there is one little section that just has a bunch of gunk stuck to it. You can't see it on camera, but I couldn't remove it using adhesive remover. So I used my smallest drill bit, added some hooks, and then added my organizer so that she can add her chalk markers or whatever she wants. Now I made this lamp and I can make a video on how I made it, but the reason that it holds into place perfectly is because I'm using that little piece that holds the clock in place that was previously there. Then I added puck lights on the inside and the puck lights are amazing. I got them on Amazon. They bring six, but the coolest thing is that they have a remote so you don't ever have to touch it and they have a timer as well so you can turn them off automatically. For the door, I went a little bit extra and I wanted to add some cool detail in that empty space there so that I can hang wreaths. So I went ahead and took a small drill bit and made two holes side by side on each panel. Now, if you can find tiny pipe straps or pipe brackets, use that, but I didn't have any, so I went with this method grabbed some wire and I fed it through and to make my life a little easier what I did was I shaped the wire like a little hook just so it fed through. So now I'm going to spray paint the door with Rust-Oleum Seaside and I purchased this at Michael's. Michael's has coupons. This thing is eight bucks so you're definitely going to want to use a coupon but the coverage is pretty amazing because I use less than one can for both sides. 
Now for the door handle, you can only put one door handle on this, but since I'm covering up that space, I'm gonna need two. So I got two of these handles from Lowe's as well as these machine screws. These are three inches and they're basically just a giant nut and bolt. So what I wanna do is feed this through so that it can grab onto the other handle and I am gonna have to make one of the holes bigger on each of the handles. So once I have it, basically what you can see here, you can only add one handle. This is why I'm rigging it. I'm gonna go ahead and basically just put one side through and I did go ahead and paint the screw black. And then I'm gonna put the other side and tighten it up. For the bottom, I'm gonna use the original screws that it came with. You don't need to use another one of those because there's no hole at the bottom. And then we're just going to tighten that up and now you can open the door from the inside and the outside. I thought this was really cool. Now I wanted to add some faux wrought iron. Now all of this is super extra. You don't have to do any of this, but I thought it made it look really cool. So this I got at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna cut off all those extra pieces, cut it down the middle, and I did this to two pieces. Then I glued everything together. And once I glued it together, I did go ahead and use some wire to kind of secure it in place. Now, because this is for my daughter, I'm extra careful that the wire isn't poking through and I'm feeding it into itself. Now I'm gonna size it and with a regular marker, I'm just going to mark off what I need to cut down. Once I cut everything down, I'm gonna spray paint it. And as you can see, I kind of made that little arch. So I used oil rubbed bronze. I have this in my garage because I've used it on a ton of projects, but you can get this anywhere. As you can see, I really love using Rust-Oleum. Once it was completely dry, I just kind of squished it in there, making sure that the wires are not being squished under. And then I'm tightening it, making sure that the wires are going into the little hole when I was done so that nothing is poking through. Now I just painted my doorbell to match with the same spray paint. This is my daughter's favorite part of the house. It didn't come with the house because like I said, a lot of original pieces were missing, but I did get it on the step two website along with the skylight. I found this gorgeous lantern and hook set on the Lakeside Collection website. However, I didn't have the best experience with the website. Shipping was expensive. It took two and a half weeks to get here and they signed me up for something that charged me 15 bucks a month. So I found the same lights on Amazon. I will link it below, but you can literally use any light if you go to Home Depot and find something and just add it to a plant hook. My husband made some pilot holes, drilled it in, and then added the light. And with the one that was left over, I just used a hook that I had around the house, made a hole, I spray painted it to match, and then I added my light to the side of the house, making sure that it wasn't going to be in the way of the shutters. So now for the house number, I got these house numbers at Walmart. They were 97 cents each. We held them in place using painter's tape and then drilled them in. And I think this is the cutest. For the mailbox, I found this adorable little mailbox at Joanne Fabric. And I attached it using command hooks. I didn't know if this was going to rust or not. So command hooks was definitely the way to go for us. I added a little planter box to the bay window. Now this I got at Lowe's. Now you can go ahead and just place this on the floor. Honestly, the plastic in the front is very flimsy, so I wouldn't recommend drilling it. So I made this little bench. I can also make a video on how I make that. And then I added my flowers and staged the rest of the house. Ready? Are you ready yeah. to see your new house? Yeah. Ready, set, go. <laughs> I really hope that you enjoyed the transformation and if you did, please be sure to give us a thumbs up, share this video with somebody you know that has been wanting to make over a playhouse, and let me know if you'd be interested in a six month update video. As usual, thank you so so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching.